Hello, it's Florian Musso again with the educational building broadcast. Today's subject is systems. So here we have a bridge structure done by students of mine. You can see that it's quite repetitive and we are interested in this repetition and the systematic way of approaching the problem, for example, of a bridge. There are three parts, the stick here, this round connector and the uh, normal bridge element and uh, all of the three you can connect together to form a bridge structure where you have as little parts as possible to make bigger objects out of them. So a building is much more complex than these uh, structural exercises for the students. Here for example I have a wall system consisting out of reinforced concrete parts and other parts out of masonry. In this wall I have a hole and in the hole I'm going to integrate the window. So the window is a system as such. It has uh, different parts, like for example here the arch attached to the masonry, other parts that are opening, and metal pieces here um, which are responsible for the operation of the window. So all of these have to fit together and uh, how they fit together is described in a system. So if I'm designing a window I will look into a catalog and in the catalog I will find different profile series like for example this wooden profile here and so then I can integrate uh, these profiles into the opening in the masonry wall and um, I can choose different characters of glass and the main aspect is that I will be sure that all of this is working I will be sure what the insulation value is I will be sure uh, what the acoustic performance of this window is so if I'm working with industrially prefabricated systems I am able to predict the performance of the systems that I'm using. Like for example if I have a house and uh, I'm designing a wall and a window in the wall then the same window might appear on another side of the building and I could use though the same detail twice. So, for example, Misano has designed a house, 50-50 house, and the house is one of these Misano projects, the core containing the spaces uh, that stink or make noise, and um, it's a very regular structure of uh, 50 by 50 feet. And his central idea was to support it, not in the corners, but in the middle of each of the sides of the square. So Mies van der Rohe has been developing the structure for the 5050 house together with Myron Goldsmith, who was a young engineer at the time. Uh, this first model here shows the structure that was chosen finally. It's the four columns consisting out of I-beams and then you have this perimeter beam and um, square grid filling out the perimeter beam. So this is the one that you know from the books. But uh, they have been studying other alternatives for the load-bearing system here, for example, you have a combination of a perimeter beam and the closest connection of the four columns. And as the moments get bigger in the middle, the beam gets bigger in the middle as well. This is a solution with um, 
columns in the corner that Myron Goldsmith has been developing by himself and it has a diagonal infill and this here is another structural system that Mies van der Rohe was interested in at the time which is the primary beams on top of a set of secondary beams and then this part here of the, the circular beam be, doesn't really uh, bear a lot of load. It's rather to stabilize the end of these cantilevering um, girders. And well, this is one that uh, I made uh, because I think it's what would be making sense in this case. It's um, two columns more and then primary beams in one sense and uh, secondary beams uh, in the other. So this allows you to have uh, about the same load on each one of these uh, structural elements. So if you are very bright, you can design your own systems, like the Office Foster Associates, for example. They have been designing several systems for their own buildings. One of the buildings being the Willis faber duma building in Ipswich. And uh, this is a rather amorphous uh, building shape. So um, they tried to um, create a system in uh, supporting the center of the building by a square grid. And then they corresponded to the amorphous shape by a series of columns around the periphery. So on one side you have the columns placed on the central grid and then you have a second set of columns around the periphery. So that's for the structure and it's a three or four story building and then they designed a facade and the facade is divided in vertical strips. The advantage of this approach is that by resolving one of these vertical strips you are able to conceive a facade for the totality of the building, but the condition is that it would be able to be either convex or concave in the context of the building facade. So inside the grid we have floors containing toilets and elevators. There's a big hole in the middle with escalators moving from one story to the others. And there's also in section here a rather interesting detail because people are circulating along the glass facade here and working on the interior. If I'm looking at the facade detail here, I will have a cantilever and then the cantilever is supported by this set of columns and then starts a waffle slab structure for the squares on the interior. And people are walking here in the periphery and the facade is a curtain wall which is right next to uh, where the people walk. This has several advantages. People are able to look out. There's uh, cold coming from the facade. So this has been um, perceived by people who are in movement while the people who are working at their desks are rather protected on the inside. And this curtain wall facade is suspended from the top and here it's only guided. The uh, central criteria is the span of the glass building the surface of the facade and this is around two meters. Two meters. Uh, he needed additional support and this additional support is created by glass swords that are 
here cantilevering out from the reinforced concrete structure of the building. As we can see, um, the office of Foster Associates could concentrate all their work on the facade on one section. So you can, um, in, a, in a building which costs uh, several million, um, consecrate all your work on one detail and make it perfect and then repeat it all around the building. In 1991, Foster designed a building for the third London airport in Stansted. And for this third London airport, he designed a load-bearing structure being supported by uh, central jacks. Well, it has bracing as well here in the middle. And inside these elements is integrated lighting and ventilation and so on. So all the technical systems are in this. And then uh, I have the second element here. Once again, the same. And these are linked by additional beams. And on top of these, he has cupolas with a skylight in the middle. So by designing one of these uh, mushrooms, he is able to create a wide spanning structure covering all the passenger area of the new uh, Stansted Airport. If I'm drawing this in section, you have the roof structure, which is supported by these jacks. Then I have the connecting element. Then I have the next. Yeah. And people will be using this space here. So as you can see, with a couple of uh, lines, I am describing the structure of an international airport. So um, that's uh, valid thinking, a very clear concept for the structure. And he developed his own uh, system for the building. So the two main aspects of working with systems are predictable performance and more time to develop the detail. So this will stand for detail quality.